Hold on. Can I check anywhere? Don't even know if I can check. Yes, it, it the is. red light is on. OK. Uh, hi, Brooke. Hi, Lulu. Hi. Bro hi. Uh, hi. Oh my God, I have been enthralled by the show. So I'm with Women in Sport WA. We are an advocacy platform for women in sport in Western Australia. Um, and we just love what you women did and just getting up there. Now, Lulu is one of our ambassadors and uh, we have talked to her. So Lulu, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with Brooke because I'm yeah, a bit fangirling here. Really that's so <laughs> tell us what it felt like last night first at like oh my god it wasn't last night so you know when you got to the top oh look women in sport we've got lulu here thank you for women in sport because she looked after me the whole way through oh the dedication and to make it to the top with her was just so powerful oh it was just unbelievable and the emotion I, I got to really feel that emotion last night I wish I was with you last night because it was such a powerful moment um I'm, I'm still pinching myself it was just truly remarkable we're very proud of her <laughs> oh so am I I love her I think I can steal her from you. I think she needs to come to essay. She's mine. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, what was your favourite moment throughout the whole summit? That's a really good question because I haven't been asked that one before. That's a good one. My favourite moment was actually Lulu and I would wake up in the morning and we... <laughs> We were so tired. We'd always sleep together. And we'd look at each other and we're so tired and we'd just pop our head out of our bivy bag and we'd do this little meerkat thing. We're like, <laughs> to smile and we could other. just lose it laughing every morning. So that friendship and happiness that they didn't really show uh, was just the most magical moment. And I just felt this joy in life again. Like I was in high school, like just, just loving best life. Is. That was the best moment. Yeah. And so when did that, you know, you, you got on the show, when did the relationship begin? Well, it was funny. As soon as we started walking, I looked at her, she looked at me, and she gave me this massive smile, and she smiled with her eyes as she did. And I'm like, she's my person. And it was yeah. funny because we talked, and then we sort of separated, and I went off and helped Kitty, and she was my – but we – I don't know, it was just one of those things, like – we just knew and then it just it blossomed and it was so strong but people didn't see it and yeah just we have similar backgrounds and we just gelled and it was such a powerful thing our friendship it was amazing yeah it really was like yeah it was one of the highlights for me I have to jump in for me it That's was okay. also one of my highlights like to be able to wake up every morning and have have that friend there like you did we did feel like we were at like kids at school and you know what are we going to do today and what's today you're going to hold for us and just waking up with so much excitement and and you know the aches and pains just they were quietened with the joy that we were having and the fun that we were actually really having out there so um yeah and tell them the bubbles to... and <laughs> so when I, the what? <laughs> when I first met Brooke um there was this like bumblebee flying around and over in New Zealand the bumblebees are like really big and it was like coming close to her and she's like oh my god there's a bumblebee and she starts like moving backwards and falling down the hill and I'm like grab her and I'm like hey hang on and so from that moment I was like okay like I didn't know her we didn't know each other I was like okay I'm gonna have to really look out for book I really just gonna make sure that she's okay and she's I've got to get her to the top with me because yeah, I've got to make sure she's good. <laughs> now, Brooke, um, the Jackie situation. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. They played on that. Oh, you know what? It was a horrible moment for me because I, I genuinely didn't mean anything by the whole fire situation and she was so angry and... 
like my heart was racing and I'm like, just, just remember, you know, she's upset. It's not personal. So I, you know, I feel like I handled it really well. Um, the show didn't show that there was such a long gap between that, that moment and then getting rid of her. So I oh, sat with it right. for hours yeah. and it was horrible and I just felt yeah. so out of it. Look, it was, it was, it was a horrible moment, but you know what? Jackie and I reconnected after the show um, and, you know, to her credit, she was one person who came forward and said, great game, Lulu, great game, Brooke. Yep. You know, I'm a world champion and I can respect your gameplay. And you know what? I take my hat off to Jackie and, um, yeah, it was it, it was tough, but, hey, we're all over yeah, it. Yeah, Jackie, uh, Jackie definitely recognised, um, you know, the good game and she's such a good, like she has great sportsmanship, like out of everyone, especially like the way she left the mountain would have been hard, but... You know, she didn't hold any grudges and her sportsmanship was just amazing. You can tell that she's a five-time world champion because of the way she conducted herself. Absolutely. That's really good to know because yeah. myself and my husband were like, and family who were all watching it well, the last night was like, that was pretty petty. The way they all at the end was like, you caught, you caught, you caught, you don't deserve. And it was like the whole way up, it was a game. Everybody yes. knew it was a game. But I think, Karen, like, that was the hardest thing. Like, right at the end, I had to – I was the one that was in the position to make the last calls for three people to leave. Like, and it was really, really personally tough for me. Like, you know me, Karen. I'm just, the, you know, a lover of everyone and want to see everybody do great. So to make those calls, it was, it was definitely strategy and it was definitely our gameplay. Brooke and I were strategizing through the game and uh, that went – unnoticed by so many and um i'm not sure how because we were together laughing our asses off all the time you would think that they probably just thought we were silly because we were laughing all the time but we're actually laughing about our strategy but um <laughs> you know at the end, it's like yeah it's, it's like the gameplay and, and the game and right there in those crucial moments it's felt more because there's a smaller group and you're so close to the top but it's me or them do you know what i mean it's yeah. like we have to make these choices Am I going to allow someone to take the food off my table? No. Um, and I definitely wanted to have Brooke up there with me. And, and when I ran to that last bag, I was like, I fell over and I was like, oh, my God, I'm safe and Brooke is safe. I know. I know we're safe. And that's all I was thinking about. So, you know, it was tough to make those calls. And, and, and in that group setting, I think that that feeling was still there because it was still so fresh for you know, Indy, Alex and um, Jan. So, yeah, you know, that yeah. played a part in that's, everything. That's the thing. Those people were going to take us out 100%. And going yeah. into, like, so when we're going into the lake bit, we knew Sam was going. Sam had to go. And then we were thinking ahead. We knew Josh had to go. And we saw this bond between Alex, Isaac and Indy. And it, they were becoming yes. quite, like, yeah. strong. So I, that's why I took it in Jans. Everybody's like, why did you take in Jans? I'm like, oh, we need numbers. We need and numbers. it was a brilliant game plan <laughs> so that good. nobody saw. Um, I was and it just went her the whole time. The whole time I was like, you better get rid of him. You better get rid of him. Drop kick him off the well, mountain thing is, now. The thing is, though, he thought, he thought, like, after watching it, because we hadn't seen it yet, it's so funny, Brooke and I giggle, because he thought that he had the better of us. He thought he had the better yeah. of Brooke and the better of me because I, you know, he knew Brooke and I were one one team. And it was, we giggled because it was like, well, actually, no, you played a piece in our game plan and we executed it exactly how, you know, we wanted to execute. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then some of the, like, articles <laughs> last night that came out after the show were, Oh, Jans was gutted. He wish he put the foot on the throttle last time to get to that last bag. You see, and now you can understand the game plan in, in Alex as well. Like Alex is my biggest competition physically. Like he was beating everyone running and I was thinking, man, if, if there's anything we've got to run for, you know, he's he's gonna beat he's gonna beat me. And um I was like, I can't like we had a conversation with Alex on the mountain when Brooke and I were talking, they didn't show it, but Alex came over and we said to him, Alex, we have to split you and Isaac up. We have to. So Alex, are you going to 
are you going to vote for us over Isaac? And he goes, oh, no. Nah. And then he goes, oh, yeah, I will. And it's like, no, you won't. It's just like Brooke yeah. and I wouldn't uh-huh. vote for either one yeah. of anybody else other than each other. So we knew our alliance to each other. We're like, no, you're never going to do that for us. So we're going to have yeah. to get rid of the strongest person that's competitive. And it was Alex. So. And do you, do you really think that they just, at the start of it, underestimated you, didn't 100%. see you as a threat? <laughs> Yeah, but what was it? Well, I'll tell you. Was what it the I giggling? Think, like, was it the giggling girls? I think was yes. It? Absolutely. <laughs> like I just feel like Brooke and I, we had that I don't know unwritten knowing that we had each other's back, and so we weren't together all the time, but we did start the day and finish the day together, and we had so much fun. People could see our connection and our friendship, but they just didn't really it went under the radar just like I did and you know it yeah it was perfect and I, I'm just so surprised at um you know how unnoticed our deep our strong connection really was and that was from the beginning it wasn't later it wasn't later in the game it was from day one yeah Brooke what do you and think we do. We knew it was really important to make friendships with everyone. It couldn't just be Brooke and Lulu, you know, and that's why Lulu sort of went off with probably the fitter people and connected with them. I kept, because I'm a psychology student, so I just wanted to motivate all like, you know, Kitty and all the wonderful people at the back because that's sort of what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring everyone up and get the best out of everyone. And I know in a group setting, a sense of belonging is really important. So I wanted all of those people to feel, feel like they belong. And I feel... Yeah, like the people that did get out, you know, first, Steve and Kitty, you know, they felt that from us. So those relationships were really important and we sort of worked it. And it was funny because I stepped up at the right times I needed to. And Mm. I'm glad Lulu didn't step up at the start because that just worked in like sort of beautifully. It was just a beautiful strategy that all worked together. And she got a few knockouts at the end and I was like, boom, boom. Uh, shake the room. Room. <laughs> <laughs> room, room. But yeah, you know, it was the dynamic was crazy, and, and like Brooke was, you know, I also was trying to friend, um, you know, make those connections with everyone as well, and could see the diversity in the group between the fitter and the ones that were, you know, challenged a little bit more. And I also made an effort to go and help them, and you know, try to encourage them because. We all want to do so well, and if the best we can do is is help each other along the way and encourage each other along the way, then that's you know that's just who I think Brooke and I are, are as people, and that generally just comes out authentic anyway. And then when it comes to making those hard decisions, like I, you, us, Brooke, I was in tears, like I was just gutted. She like, was absolutely gutted. But the one thing I can say about Lulu's game was it was brilliant because she was herself, she was strong, she helped everyone. Her name did not come up once, right? <laughs> so I think people need to realise how, how loved she was in the group. Her name, and I'm like, Lulu, your name just never comes up. I felt at risk all the time and I was just like, why, why does everyone like you so much? Like, but she was a great, she was a great competitor, she was a great friend. She played the game probably the best and um, I was grateful to be by her side because I wouldn't have made it up the top without her. Okay, so then let's get to the very end, right? We're jumping here. Because, Lulu, the conversation we had in our house was, and I said this, Brooke, to her, you know, um, the eye on the prize and then those knockout punches that needed to come when they came, she stepped up and did it, right? But at the end, they were what people were giving out to you about. And to us, watching it at home, we felt that's not on because it was a game and she did what she had to do. And in those last three situations, um, you did control the game right did is that what came across at that time when the money was shared out let's talk about the money when the money was shared out at the end and I presume that was a long period of time that that was going on for yeah. um, but 
the three people who were the loudest on the editing were the ones that uh, you, that were cut at the end. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that, you know, in the game like Survivor, the people with the great game plan and strategy are actually rewarded for for their great game. Um, I yeah. feel like in this one, it was very emotional for everybody. And, um, you know, the last few people that left were still very, um, very raw for them and, and being so close to the top. Like it's, I think the difference between Survivor and this is that we're going up a freaking summit and it's, you know, yeah. like every day was fueled with so much adrenaline. So our emotions um, were always up and down and peaking and when there was a helicopter coming we were like oh my god what is going to happen now because we this this hasn't been a game that's been played before so we have nothing to go on other than what we're experiencing in that moment um so I feel like yeah the feelings were really raw for the people that had just left I could tell by watching last night and seeing it in their face and in their eyes that they were hurt that they didn't make it to the top and I was the reason why they didn't, um, you know, I, I feel like it would have been nice to be applauded for just having a good game and especially being an athlete, knowing, you know, recognising a good game, you know, being um, graceful in defeat, I guess, is um, something, you know, I've suffered losses in my career that were unfair and, um, you know, I've been robbed in, in the world title fights and I still was gracious in my defeat in in recognizing that okay so next time this is what I've got to do better and I know with this there is no next time but you know mm. I just feel like people could have been more gracious understanding that we were all playing this game we all came into the game on day one not knowing each other and our objective of the game was to get to the top and to the win the money and that was everybody's yeah. objective so to point out that I was not loyal or to point out all these things about me. I just think that that's not really fair because I really do believe we were all there playing a game and that was the objective. The objective was to get to the top and win the money. And that's, that's what, that's what I did, you know, so don't crucify me for being up there and, and rather, you know, perhaps look back and go, wow, you know, these girls did amazing and, and, you know, celebrate the good game plan we had, the, the physical things we overcame just like everybody else was celebrating, you know, other people and, and probably themselves that how far they got. Like, um, I just don't think that it should have been discredited. Um, but, you know, it's a I, game. I, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that because, you know, us girls, nobody nobody carried our bags on the way up. Like, absolutely yeah. grateful for what we got. But, you know, oh, we, we carried sorry. our own bags. Lulu picked me up every time I fell. Her name didn't come up at all. I can see why people might have got annoyed with me because I, you know, it was myself and, you know, I did get... But you know what? Lulu's name did not come up once. She was strong. She was fast. She was supportive with everyone. And I just don't see how people, you know, she was put on the spot. She had to make decisions. She's a bloody good leader and she she's going places and, you know, I, I, I really felt that maybe Lulu should have had the most, to be honest. Um, and it was really sad because we were like, you know, they were going to give, they weren't going to give some of us money. And I was like, you know what, if that had happened to her, I would have handed half my money over to her because you're, you're a team player, you're a legend, and that's why you're a sporting superstar and hat off. You're my hero. So. <laughs> Thank you. For like, I think, well, you. you know, it, it, even even Cher, at least. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, 100%. You know, you well, I, do, I, do, I do have to say, like, all in all, Karen, um, what a bloody amazing experience. Like, if even if you just took out the money aspect of it, we were able to do things that nobody has ever done before. Like we were the first to experience all of these things. We got to do mad, crazy challenges that just fueled me and lit me up like you would not believe. And to be able to be the first one at the top of the summit and, and, and really just be like, wow, that moment for me was just like, oh, my God, we actually made it. And, and you know, I was just so happy that Brooke was standing next to me. I was like, this is something I wanted from meeting her. I was like, I really, in my head, I was like, I'm going to get there. I envisioned it. So I was 
just so proud of myself to make it all the way to the end. But then to be able to share that moment with Brooke and be there with another woman to me meant so much because it was just an amazing moment. And I am so, so grateful for the whole experience. And, you know, I'm bloody grateful to be taking home $90,000. Like that can change people's life. No matter what it's it was, like it's just, you know, I got paid to have these amazing experiences. Like awesome. <laughs> So good. No, it is. It's pretty amazing. That's yeah. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, I'll take that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the uh, handball of the, the email. The handball. The handball. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, there's no way I could do it, but I do know a world two-time world champion boxer who could. Hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. Hey, I tell you what. The biggest thing is like Karen. I've done it to myself many times, and and it's. It's really a mindset that I think that you go into. Like for me, it, I'm in my element. Like it's one goal, one objective and tunnel vision from there on in. Once I've decided that I'm going to do that, it's like I'm in 120%. There's no looking sideways. Just see yourself right at the end. And that's a mindset that I think it takes um, to achieve most things in life and, and especially things like this is something that's, you know, extraordinary really because it is like you're dodging people and you don't know how they're going to react and you're dodging all these obstacles, the helicopter, like the mountains keeper that was just, you know, yeah. had us on edge all the time um, and just the elements of nature. Like it was hectic. It was so crazy. Like that terrain was just insane and there's no way any of us could have, known or plan it was completely unknown every single day what what today will hold and to be there I just love like love 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 that moment and and I really thrive in that area and, and pushing myself to be able to go I've got to do that I did that so but I did it with a smile on your face yeah yes exactly that's so exactly what fun. I was gonna say like every really tough obstacle it was either Lulu like was like I'm gonna do this speeding over and then that last one or the one where you left oh. Indy behind it wasn't oh, yeah. like that you were it didn't come across that you were like oh, you were just relishing the fact that you're going to have to do it and yeah. probably knew that there was something you know going to be over on the other side I actually but, did but this is the thing Karen I didn't think too far ahead I just took every moment in the moment and I think that that's what really helped me because you know, I said to Brooke after, like Brooke mentioned that she she actually came running into the tent one night and she's like, your name it never gets mentioned. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, whatever. Like, um, all right. Yeah. I didn't think too much of it. But I have to be completely honest with you. I didn't. All I saw in my mind was me getting to the top. And that's all I saw. I didn't yeah. think about what people were thinking about me. I didn't think about... <laughs> Whether I didn't just go I into that mindset there. of, you know, <laughs> like, oh, what are they thinking? I wonder where I sit with everyone. I just couldn't be bothered with all of that. And I just wanted to focus on the end result. Okay, Brooke, let's and talk. I'm the yeah, let's talk to Brooke now for a bit, Lulu. We've had enough of you. Brooke, <laughs> the, the, Brooke <laughs> the Brooke Johns relationship. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, unlike Lulu, I was analysing everyone, everything from day one. I was, I heard Jans on day one or two say, I did a marathon with my girlfriend and she stopped. So I kept going like, boom, I know he's trouble. So I was analysing everyone and like everything. And I know night one, my brain was going a million miles per hour and it's, I did not sleep. I was up thinking, strategising. Um, yeah, so I went in going, I need relationships because I'm not super, super duper fit like um, Lulu. So, yeah, so when I started to feel Alex, Isaac and Indy, like Indy had said, girl power, girl power, girl power, but then she was off with the boys all the time and I didn't feel that relationship. So I'm like, hmm. So, yeah, I, I felt them becoming an alliance and, and when Jan's was feeling a little bit, scared with no one around him and pulled me in I'm like this is brilliant because if I give him a lifeline he has mine and Lulu's back and he is was practically a pawn for the like in the yeah. chest game so it was, it was great like I brought him in and played the game and it was risky but um it ended up being the best decision ever because we yeah. 
It did. It we did. did. It, it, I mean, he is a good bloke. I do like him. I do actually like him, but he was great for us, Lulu, wasn't he? And <laughs> Yeah, it did. It worked out in our favour. Like, you know, and the funny thing is, is at that point, there was still Josh, Isaac, Alex, Indy, and then the three of us because, you know, Jans and Brooke, Brooke had brought Jans in. So it was three against four, but it still went unbeknownst to them that you know they still had numbers against us but we still were able to work work that and you know and and yeah we just it was brilliant it was so good like it was such a good it was such awesome. a good game so much fun and it wasn't really till later like this is the thing like Brooke had this whole analyzing everyone so we'd get together at the end of the night and we'd have like great chats and debriefs and things like that and I, I guess because we were always laughing about it, nobody really realised that we were having these That's what strategy you were talks. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. But it was funny to me as well because she had her way, I had my way, and I just found it humorous that, you know, she's thinking so deeply about all of these things, yet it was necessary for both of us to make it to the top. Like her strength and my strength combined just made us like a power duo. Yeah. We were unstoppable. Yeah. I'm a badass no. woman. <laughs> <laughs> now, Isaac. Everybody did seem to love Isaac. Oh, yeah. He was an absolutely lovable character. He is. Hey, yeah. Vicky. So kind and so fun. And I, I remember as we're getting to the top, he's like, Brooke, you have to kiss me at the top of the mount, uh, up top of the mountain. I'm like, okay, okay. Like, so we had some, we had such a beautiful bond. He was yeah. awesome, and look, he he didn't give up. You know, we all supported him, and I, I think he's truly inspiring. Um, yeah, so I'm just so happy to have us three together. Oh yeah, it really was. Like, um, you know, I, Isaac, Isaac and I connected pretty early in the game as well, and. You know, the day that he was struggling to get up that really big mount, that really big day of slogging all the way uphill. Like there were moments that, you know, we were hanging out in the back and stuff. So Isaac's definitely a lovable character. He's just fun. He did nick off every time there needed to be something done. You wouldn't see him. But, you know, that's just Isaac. You know, like if we were cleaning up around camp or doing our dishes or something like that, he, he was never to be seen. Like oh, never. And he was, <laughs> yeah, he just got away with it every time, but he just had everybody feeling really comfortable and, and everybody and loved his, everyone loved his character and his, you know, what he has to bring to the table and he was a joy to be around. <laughs> and we had to keep Jans in. He was cooking us food. How good was it to, like, have a man cook us food all the time? It was, like, amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just wanted to take that role, so we were like, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll take it. Um, when you when the whole thing with Alex going, what did Isaac say to you afterwards? Oh, um, he just he knew. It was look, he was crazy. he was sad, but he yeah. was okay in the end. He at yeah. that stage he knew it was a game. He was okay. Yeah. I think he was just relieved it wasn't him. So yeah, yeah. like yeah. I think he was actually grateful that. He was still there, to be honest with you. And even though they had such a great bond and they still do, they, they formed a really great friendship too. Like, I think at that point he was just, oh, my God, I'm still here. Thank you so much for, you yeah. know, having me here still, you know? Yeah. And have you heard from him since? Because he did say on the show last night he was very grateful to you getting him up there and winning 200 and something grand. <laughs> yeah, we actually actually haven't heard too much from Isaac. Isaac, yeah. Isaac naughty. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, I've got a little kid with me. That's okay. <laughs> My, mine just came in as well. Yes. I, you're no, good. It's not easy you, working with a kid. <laughs> are you super proud of your mommy? <laughs> are you super proud of your mommy? Did she climb a mountain? Yeah. Did mommy climb the mountain? Uh, uh. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Did she fly up the mountain like a fairy, like a fairy princess? No. What did I do? You pooped. Oh, no. <laughs> you pooped just about to <laughs> Can't wait with children, can we? <laughs> I love it. You pooped up the mountain. So what next, Brooke? You know what? The sky's the limit. I've told everyone. 
it's funny because I didn't go into it wanting to be in TV, but for the first time in my life, I felt a sense of belonging. I really enjoyed yeah. the producers. I enjoyed the people. Yeah. Anything that I can have a bit of a break from the children. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess so. I'd love to do another TV show. Um, What's next? I'm going to see Lulu next week because I miss her Yay, so much. And she's I coming to break with her. Um, yeah, so look, I, I'm up for anything and everything. I'd love to work with Lulu and maybe do some motivational speaking, oh, yeah. girl power. I think we can. Oh, I love you, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say hi, look, there's Brooklyn. We can Hall. achieve so much and inspire people. Last so time. I think. Remember, remember we were watching the last time. Hi. Say hi. Mm -hmm. Hi. 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 It's like, where's your kids, Lulu? <laughs> Look, there's Brooke's daughter. It'll be good. I, I, I'm looking forward to what's ahead. Yeah, 100. Us mamas do it for the kids, hey? Absolutely. I mean, that's everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, that, this is so difficult with kids. That's okay. I'm running away. We don't mind. <laughs> <There's probably laughs> do we mind? Okay. We can edit this. Hi. <laughs> hi. 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 What did I say? Hi poops. She said hi poops. Mum, mum, mum's having talking, or she has to go to childcare. That was the deal. <laughs> say hi to Sean. Sean, say hi. Say hi. 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 Maybe we need to get them on a bit of a FaceTime while we talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Too funny. That's gold. So TV or motivational speaking um, and the likes like that. Yeah. I actually, yeah, I do keynote speaking already, um, which, yeah. is, which is great. You know that Karen is, you know. Yeah. Sorry, I'll, I'll just. Yeah, sure. <laughs> And um, my yeah, husband Rob was like last night. Oh, I have to get Lulu on now again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean that's awesome. I'm doing a keynote speak next week. Um, on oh, no, the next week, the following week in Mandra for the Youth Forum. Oh I'll yeah, be speaking at that um about leadership and obviously parts of my journey and then. Yeah, and then just running my programs, the Her Champion program, which is, yeah. you know, you know all about that. So with all the youth and women, which is amazing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right. Have we missed anything? Because we can edit this and I can chop it up, hopefully. What questions so. have we got? Need to... Let me just, while she's gone, I'm just going to pull this down. Because I, I love that interview. I've had, like, sun on my face. <laughs> Sean is gone. Now you need to be quiet. Or, oh, or, see, that's, look, or, look, that's or so much better. Room. I had like yeah, some on my face. Okay, Sean is I gone. Think, yeah, I think no, we no, covered no, everything. No, right? The girl yeah, power. Else? Okay, let's go. Oh, yeah, talk about that. Talk about let's that. Let's go. Ask us the... a question, Karen. Okay. How, Brooke, how important? I know how it is for Lulu, but for you, I hope you don't mind me asking this question, but all through the show, and even my daughter said, like, you know, when they were advertising you, it was like the single mom, the single mom. And I was like, yeah, but like a single mom, is that like in a positive way or a negative way? Or the girl power element of going through the show, how important to you was that during the journey and at the end? Look, I didn't mind the single mum bit because, you know what, it's tough. It's tough yeah. being a single parent, not just a single mum, being a single parent. And, you know, I wanted to I want to inspire women that, you know, it's never too late to reinvent yourself. And I've just started a psychology degree. And it would have been good if they went single mum slash psychology student. Um, you yeah. know, I want to inspire women that if you're not happy or you're in a situation, you know, it's never too late to reinvent yourself in any aspect. And I really hope that I could connect with 
women out there and, you know, hopefully inspire others to go do something to change their life and be amazing and whether it's climb a mountain or something crazy like that, I just want to inspire people. So I didn't mind it too bad. Um, and hopefully I can connect with some of these, like, you know, a single parent, I'm at the top of a mountain. Like, I'm, parenting really set me up for that that moment, the fatigue, the, you know, all of it, um, conflict management, ha how to handle people. So See, that's, what, that's like perfect because that's like, what do you do with parenting? All the time. Conflict management. I would have ran a mile. I hate conflicts. <laughs> <laughs> but we're Absolutely. Really constantly, right, with the kids. So, so yeah, I want, I, I can't have an interview without children and you just got to do it. You've got to work around it. And, you know, it's not easy. <laughs> When's my trip? But, like, I'm left to be up there at the time. I'm so sorry. But that's okay. Don't apologize to me. Can you just go out there just for five more minutes because I'm talking to Lulu and this nice lady? Yeah, Karen. Can you please? Can you please stop me, baby? Give me two minutes. I'm going to stop the TV from talking. Hold on. That's okay. Sonny, you got to choke on that. Can you do that, please? I like your t shirt. Yes. My son, said, my son said, my son said, be careful of the mountain goats in the coming mountain goats. He said, don't get round up the mountain goats. Hey, I Googled your boxer last night. Tanisa? Yeah. I found Rob was like, she getting back into the ring? And I said, she, she talks about this boxer. Oh, well, she mentioned her name. What was her name? Estrada. Strata, and then I went, Oh, yeah, got it. So I googled her, yeah, yeah, she's at the top of the game right now. You know, she's also receiving a lot of that, um, you know, a lot of the light, a lot of the publicity and stuff. So, yeah, the, it's, it's, like, you know, it's a fight that I've always wanted, like from when I first started, like her name was coming out, and I, I'd look her up, and I'm like, Yeah, that would be a good fight, you know, she's stylistic, she's. You know, she's got style, she's got, you know, she's she's just got everything for women's boxing and I believe she's got everything that I've got too. Do you, I'm just putting you up there, oh, there we go for a sec. Do you, Lulu, want to get back into the ring? I would love to get back into the ring for one fight specifically, which is Sinisa Estrada and um, she's at the top of the game right now and I just think that it would be a great fan-friendly fight with her. Um, I, and it's a fight that I have wanted from way back when I first started and started hearing her name back in um, 2014. And I was like, that would actually be a really good fight, you know. And two beautiful-looking women, stylistically in the ring, she's she's really good and, and, and fan-friendly and, you know, the same with me. And I just think that it would be a firecracker fight. And... At the same time, you need a dancing partner with credentials sometimes, and I haven't been in the ring for quite a while, so um, it'd be, you know, it'd be a good challenge for me, but it, I think it'd also be a good challenge for her. Um, but maybe Can I be a ring girl? Set. Can I be the yeah. ring girl? <laughs> we could make a great ring girl. <laughs> I just can <laughs> smile. <laughs> and what does that training entail then? Because I know you've gone to the States before to yeah. train. Yeah, so I don't know. You know, if if I, if that fight, because that's a big fight, like it's probably the biggest fight that would be out there for me. Um, And that fight would take me, I mean, I haven't been fighting for a while now because of all the COVID stuff that happened and coming back home and spending time with the kids. So for me, it would definitely be a long training camp, um, a minimum of 12 weeks to get ready for that fight um mm -hmm. yeah and that would mean you know time away from the family and everything so a fight like that would have to be definitely worth it financially and also make a lot of sense um to why I want to get back in the ring after achieving pretty much what I set out to achieve in the ring so now, that fight would definitely bring me back okay so you know I'm Irish and we have Katie Taylor, who just Katie got beaten Taylor. recently, but she's not yeah. not retiring. But we also no. have, you know, in the UFC, 
we have sorry I think I snorted there by accident we've Conor McGregor but you know the yes. way he's a little bit more flamboyant than Katie is oh, so yeah, if yeah. you were if you were calling out a fighter right yeah. now here Lulu call her out tell her you want a fighter Denise Estrada let's get it on you know who I am you know it would make a great fight and I think that the fans would love it so you know where I am Come and get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wonder if that will work. Right. Hold on a second. Just give me two seconds. I'm just going to change the view. To, having to get my ass prepared for a fight again. I know. <laughs> does, does that like fill you with joy now after doing the summit? Or does it fill you I with like, oh, I don't know if I, I could. I don't know. Do, like, know. I love. I can do it. Of course, I can do it. I've done it so many. No, times. we know you uh, can do it. We're not <laughs> dead in that. <laughs> no, I love, I love it. Like it, but it's just a matter of like I couldn't stay, keep staying in that space with nothing coming up because uh, there's other things in life that we have to do as well. And um, I love being in there, and it's definitely the fight that I would love to have. But I, you know, I'm also at the point where I want to start building other things in my life, and and definitely one of them being, you know, financially to to bring in um to be able to financially uh, be consistent do you know what i mean with fighting it's here and there and everywhere and it's so sorry, sorry. there's things yeah, yeah, yeah there's no, things that i think that now i'm looking forward to doing and achieving different things in life um and you know boxing is one of those sports that you, you can't do it forever and you take a lot of physical damage so i really I'm grateful to have done what I've done in such a short period of time, Karen. Like I started boxing just before I turned 30 and turned professional when I was 30. And in in nine boxing fights, I won my first world title. Like it's things that are not really heard of in boxing. Everyone has a big amateur career and then goes on to become professional. So I've definitely defied odds with that. And I'm proud of what I've achieved for my country um, and for myself and my family um, representing women. Definitely, I'm very proud of. <laughs> Connect Four is coming. Can you just give me a few minutes with the ladies and then I'll, I'll come out to you in a minute? Yeah? You can sit over there. Do you want to sit over there? Oh, the you want to sit down there? I want to open it. Okay, hold on. This is what happens, Brooke. This is what happens. <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> I don't know. Where's your daddy? We are. We all have sore throats in this house. I don't know, where's your daddy? I like everyone. I do, we all do now. I don't know how this works. Go find your daddy. He's in your bedroom, I think. We're all in different beds. If we're all like that sleeping. <laughs> um the role modeling element of it, because it's so important for women and girls in sports to be able, you can't be what you can't see. Um, and with women in sport in the media now, I don't, I, I hope you did. Well, there was no, nothing too bad said on, but I did hop on socials a bit last night. And the, the stupid argument came up sometimes. Oh, well, she was a world champion boxer. You know, she didn't need the money. I was like, for God's sake, it's women's sport. Like, yes, hello. Exactly. <laughs> like, a lot of people think they perceive it to be just like what, you know, what men receive. And it's not something that I go on like I'm a victim. It's actually just the truth and the fact of the matter. And, um, you know, we don't we don't earn that much money from doing sport and it's sport is one of those things that is a full-time commitment it's not just one of, especially boxing like you can't do it half otherwise you're going to get hurt and it's your life yeah. it's you know people don't realize like you have to be a hundred percent invested into what you're trying to achieve otherwise you could potentially get really really hurt and no matter if you're a guy or a woman like people got to realize that we're putting our life on the line to entertain mm. the crowd and to you know it's a sport and to become victorious and be you know achieve the things that we set out to achieve like becoming a world champion is that's a dream of mine that i've had since i was 15 karen like yeah. you know it's something that i wanted to do in skateboarding and i felt i really felt like i failed myself and fell short so when boxing came along i was like grabbed it with two hands and thought to myself nah 
this is my time. I've got a second opportunity now to become a world champion and I'm not letting anything stand in the way. And to come from not only be a woman, but to come from Perth, you know, yeah. Perth is WA. We're one of the most isolated cities in the world. So I've traveled over to the States. Like I've got to do things that even men dream to do, you know, and there I am this, but in the smallest weight category in yeah. boxing from freaking Perth all the way over in the States fighting on the biggest shows. Like that's just, even that's just massive. Like, yeah. so when you talk about being a role model, absolutely. Like I do a lot of work now with younger girls, the youth and, um, you know, wanting to install in them the mindset that it takes the physicality of things, you know, to keep our mental health in a good shape and then the holistic side of things. And I, I, I'm, I just want to be able to inspire girls to be able to go out and go after your dreams. Like, you know, at the end of the day, money isn't everything. Like, you know, there's so much wealth in, in following your passion and being yeah. able to achieve like some of the greatest things that you can achieve. Um, as a woman, we have to settle for, for the financial rewards that we do get for it. But yeah, it's, it's, if, if everyone was only doing it for just a career, like we want to, don't get me wrong. We want to be able to have it as a full-time career and be able to provide for our families just like men. But, you know, women in sports, it's one of those big things we've got to come up against. And it's slowly, slowly changing. And I've been in sports since I was, you know, like a 15-year-old and, and competing on, you know, in World Cup. So it's taken a very long time to change, but it's starting to change and it's, it's for the better. It's for the better because then other young girls that, you know, have the aspiration to want to go on and become athletes actually might see that they will be rewarded for their hard work and, and mm. be able to provide for their family as well. Like, I think that's a biggest stopper as to why girls drop out of sports is because how can there be a career for women in sports? Well, it's, it's huge. It, your career, your pathway. So working in yeah. sports and not there being a visible career pathway. Yeah. Um, and then, Obviously, I work in regional WA, so put, you know, yeah. Perth and Karatha. Yes. So the conversations yeah. I have with parents and kids is is, is even more isolated. More. Than absolutely, that. absolutely. Um, and I came from I came from Mandra, you know, I started both of my sports in Mandra. And that's, you know, it's not the city and you got to make moves to go to where that where that sport is and that's why I had to go over to over to the states because in Australia there's not really anyone in my weight category either so yeah. you know I went there to follow my dream and and you know part of my dream was to be able to provide for my family and I believed that somewhere it would happen I, I truly believed that I was good enough that that would happen and you know business like there's a, a business side of sport as well which I think people don't really understand and that's the challenging part. So, you know, yeah. I, I just, I, I hope that any young girls are out there that, that have the aspirations to want to go on and fulfill their dreams in sport, that they actually just follow, follow this as much as yeah. you can, because you'd be surprised how much that you will actually achieve. And maybe the financial support will be there. Maybe not, but guess what? You know, I'm a two-time world champion. <laughs> And Brooke, I think looking um, your sort of role modeling, and as we mentioned earlier on, especially for women who are not saying you are, but I know, you know, looking, I'm sort of in my 40s and statistically women in their 40s, the uh, breakup rate of their relationships and then they've had their kids and they've given up themselves within their relationship. Um, and giving up their kids uh, time for their their mar marriage or relationship and the kids and they have to reinvent themselves as you said and it was so important for you to even use those words last on last night's show and claiming that as your mantra as like I've come here I've reinvented myself. If anyone can do, if anyone can do, if I can do it, anyone can. That was yeah. just so important last night, and thank you for that because it, you know, it just, it really was because it. We all know, as you said, being women, how tough that is, yeah. and how draining it is to continually fight that battle and get yourself out of a crappy relationship or whatever it is, 
um, that you could get stuck in because of the kids. You know, so thank you for what you did. My pleasure. And it's just about being brave and, and, and having faith. And I'm just so happy now. Like, just so happy. And I just want people to see that. And, and hopefully it can guide people to happiness pretty much. Yeah. All right. Anything to say? We're going to leave it there because we've been like 52, 55 minutes. <laughs> some editing there for you to do, Karen. <laughs> oh, my what this is the worst part. I hate it. Can you send it <laughs> to someone else? No. Well, I used to send it to Polly, but then he's looked so busy. So yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. um No, I guess the last thing I'd like to say is thanks, thank you for ha- having having us and thanks Karen for you know sending the email my way to be able to have the opportunity to go on the summit and be cast for the summit. I really appreciate that. And um, Brooke, you know, amazing, amazing. Guess this time I had with you. I'm so grateful for our friendship. I really am. Oh, absolutely. And thank you, Karen, for giving my friendship and giving me a world time champion boxer that was by my <laughs> side. I feel quite <laughs> safe when I go out with Lulu. It's beautiful. So <laughs> we've got a beautiful friendship. We, we conquered that mountain. Conquered the summit. And this is just the beginning because Lulu and I are going to conquer so much together. Um, just beautiful. So blessed. So how good. And um, good luck. Keep up those studies as well. Good luck with all of that. Um, yes. And enjoy your time when you catch up in, in Perth. Yes, yeah, next week. So did, you, did you say Kitty was coming over or something? Yes, so Kitty, yeah, just quickly, Kitty is um, having an art exhibition at PCL. So Stephen is actually coming over as well to support Kitty with her art exhibition. So Kitty, Brooke, Stephen will be over. I'm sure Alex is going to show up and and show his support to Kitty for her art exhibition. So there's going to be Summit crew running around Perth uh, next weekend. And um, actually, one question I didn't ask. Who decided on divvying up the money? Who decided it? Yeah. Everyone else, you, not us. Who decided, do, you, do you know? Have you had conversations on who decided on the divvy up of the money? I do know that Jackie was pushing for yeah, me to get some. So she respect to too. her. Um, yeah. This is the only part I know because the producers had said to me, you know, are you surprised? Jackie actually stood up for you. And I was like, whoa, like I was scared that she was going to go, you know, revenge, nothing. So... You know what, I, I respect her. Um, obviously, she knows what it's like to be a champion and be respectful. And, um, yeah, I'm over the moon that she, she yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know exactly who had my back. I know Sam, obviously, from last night. I know Anarchy had my back. I, I actually feel like, you know, there was a few there. Maybe it was ones that maybe just left that were probably weren't for me. And but whatever, you know, whatever it is yeah. the the dice rolled the way that it rolled and just so grateful to have had an amazing experience, have great friendship and come out with a bit of cash. Yay! Yeah! When is the Grinners, Karen? When is the Grinners? <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on two seconds. Just two seconds. Take a photo. Hold on, take a photo. See? Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's great. Do that again. Do that again. Winners. <laughs> okay. All right. Good luck. Talk to you again, Brooke. Good luck. I hope we have you at some point. Okay. And bye. now I'm a woman in sport. I climb yeah, so we'll have to send you a t-shirt. Have yes. To send a t-shirt, Lulu. Yes, got to get her one. Definitely. Have she'll to get be able, on. I'm sure at some point she'll be able to do something. So, yeah, yeah. I like, yeah, I'll hold on. Thanks, Karen. Just... That, I think that was a really great interview. You're definitely going to be able to chop that up with some good nuggets. Yeah, it should be able to chop that up and get some good bits out of it. Hold yeah, on. I'm awesome. going to turn off the recording now because it just wants. Now I'm going to go see what my kid's doing because it's quiet. We're in trouble. Okay. Oh, I have 34 messages since. Just again. And I might <laughs> think I'm nuts. Okay, 